What's going on folks and welcome to Stu's Garage. Today we're going to be working on my favorite car ever of all time. And if you can see it behind me here, this is the uh, F13 BMW M6. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is putting on a set of down pipes. But before we get into that, first of all, I want to give a shout out to 540i Addicted. Um, I basically followed his install instructions from his YouTube channel. It's very detailed, um, but of course I'm going to go back and make my own video and uh, put in the details that I find uh, that you guys might want to know. Um, a few prerequisites before you do this install with the downpipes. Um, first of all, special tools that you're going to need. Um, any BMW after 2005 um, maybe before, but anything after 2005, you're going to need these reverse Torx bits. You're not going to get anything done without a set of these. Harbor Freight is your friend. Um, next thing with the down pipes, uh, because you're going to be deleting the catalytic converters, uh, it's going to throw a check engine light. So some people just drive with a check engine light. They don't care. Um, me personally, I don't feel like uh, it's worth taking a risk if you have a fault with your engine and your car is trying to tell you and your check engine light's already on. So um, basically, you're not going to get around that without any kind of modifications to the ECU. So what we did on this car is I took it up to Frank Smith Tuning. Um, they're really great. They do a lot of BMWs. They specialize in BMWs. They do a lot of exotic cars as well. I had them to reflash the ECU and turn off the fault for the O2 sensor emissions control, but it still reads from the O2 sensors because you do need those readings. Um, some people have tried to do O2 spacers or spark plug non-foulers on the end of the O2 sensors or even mini cats, if you know what that is. None of that stuff works. You really can't screw with the post cat O2 sensors because your car actually needs to be able to read from these, um, this type of car in specific. Um, maybe you want some older NA cars, you can kind of screw with that stuff but you don't really want to be screwing with it on this kind of car. Um, another thing that people will suggest that they don't really know a whole lot about is O2 simulators. Um, guys, trust me, if you read about O2 simulators, that's not even something that you want to start to mess with. It's not as simple as it sounds. And again, you really don't want to be messing with your O2 signals coming off of this car because it actually needs that stuff to make the engine run properly. So um, prerequisite wise, like I said, you need to do some type of ECU modification, whether it's an aftermarket, piggyback, um, custom tune, reflash, whatever it is, you're not going to get around your check engine light without getting your ECU looked at. Um, these pipes here are made by Excess Power. I did go ahead, I bought the cheap down pipes. Um, they did get good reviews. Um, I went ahead and I ceramic coated them myself and then I wrapped them in header wrap just to, uh, I don't know, help it. Maybe it'll give me two horses. Actually not. But anyways, um, yeah, so they got good reviews and they should work out well for me. Um, random tidbit of information, um, I have been advised to remove the charcoal filters from the intake. This is a secondary filter inside the intake and it's kind of like what you would get in your fish tank. It's got charcoal inside of it. Um, these are there specifically for sound deadening purposes and these guys can actually start to come apart and they'll get sucked into your turbos. And uh, that's really not something that you want to be dealing with. Um, so most people just pull these out. So I've already blabbed on for like four minutes so far. We're going to go ahead and dive into this thing. All right, so first things first, we're going to pull off the engine cover. And this just simply lifts off the engine. A little bit of force. There's these rubber balls that hold it in place. So everything just kind of pops up. And... Um, if you just happen to be watching this video, this engine is really cool because the turbos actually sit in the middle and it actually inducts the air from, from the uh, outside of the motor. So it's, uh, they call it a hot V formation because the turbos sit in the middle and your headers actually come up through the middle, which we'll get to take a look at in just a minute. But anyways, um, we pull the engine cover off. Uh, the next thing we're going to have to do is um, start unbolting some brackets and stuff over here. And um, we need to remove this cross brace uh, that holds the ECUs in place. These are your ECUs right here. Um, Frank Smith folks advised that I disconnect the negative terminal from the battery and remove the ECUs. 
Um, I don't think that I'm going to actually have to do that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. If we need the extra space, we'll go ahead and do that. But I, I may be able to get this done without disconnecting anything. So um, we're going to go ahead and dive into that. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do is start with loosening this uh, coolant reservoir and we're just going to work our way down and um, until we can get this center bracket off. Okay, so one Torx bit screw gets this thing out the way and it kind of pops up. It's held in by one of those little rubber sticky things. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pop these. These are your um, O2 sensor uh, plugs and uh, you're going to pop these out of the brackets. Um, this bracket here, basically it's held in by these little clips here. You're going to have to pry that up with a flathead gently. Um, this one here, you're actually going to have to stick in a flathead from this side and pry that clip off. So um, based on these plugs being different, I don't think you can mix them up. So um, not too worried about that. Just have to remember that they're here so that we don't forget about them later on. All right, so we got all the O2s disconnected. We're gonna pull those out in just a second. The next thing that we're gonna need to do to get out the way is your PCV lines. And anything that I'm showing you guys, it's the same on both sides of the engine. So you gotta do everything twice. Um, to disconnect these, you basically push down on these on these clips from the top and the bottom and it'll just slide out. It's a little bit hard to get your fingers in there, but you just pop those out just like that. All right, so we got the PCVs loose. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use my um, O2 sensor remover tool that I got off of Amazon specifically for this project. Um, and we're gonna pull out the top O2 sensors. Uh, we'll save those lower ones for a little bit later once we get a little bit further down. All right, so you want to be very careful with these guys. You don't want to drop them or anything because they can be very fragile. And if you break one of these things, um, I haven't price checked them, but I know they're not cheap. So you just want to don't get any kind of grime on them. If you have gloves or dirt on your hands, don't touch that white portion that you see there. Just be really careful with these guys. Okay, we've got both ECUs pulled up out of the way. Those attach the same way with these little rubber balls, uh, just like the engine cover is held on. And um, so it looks like next up we've got these ground straps that we got to take care of. There's one on each side and that looks like maybe like a 10 mil or maybe smaller. Um, and then there's two Torx bits. You can see one there and then the other one's right there. And uh, same thing on the other side, just like I said. And that little bridge should come out of there. All right, so we just slid the bridge piece out of there. I wasn't recording so you guys didn't get to see me pull that out. but. Um, Pretty much, you just have to pull this thing out carefully. Um, it starts to get up, caught up a little bit towards the passenger side with the uh, reservoir over here. So you just have to kind of take your time, maneuver it around, and it slides right out. Okay, next up, we're gonna remove the PostCat O2 sensors. So what you're gonna see is it's gonna have a clip like this holding it on. You just slide that clip back. Um, you pull out this little heat mesh, and then you can go ahead and slide your tool on there and break that free just like we did before. Okay, the next thing up is you've got one of these brackets on each side of the engine. Um, this is hold, held on by the two reverse Torx bits. So you got one there and then you got one here, which I've already put the tool on. So go ahead and pop those loose and then we'll be ready to get to the heat shield next. So the last thing holding your heat shield on is gonna be six of these Torx bit screws, the same on each side. That's a little bit of an awkward angle to get to that, but you should be able to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those off and then the heat shield should come up out of there. Alright, so we got the heat shield out of there and there's a look at what the stock down pipes look like. So we've got a couple of things to hit before we get those out. Basically, we've got our V-bands right here, which is what actually holds the down pipe onto the turbo. Um, looks like we've got a couple of screws here. Uh, that bracket holds things into place. And then we have these two screws down here. Same thing on the other side. 
So we'll go ahead, pull all those screws off, and then we'll have to go underneath the car and unbolt the um, down pipes from under there. All right, everything's clear from up top. We got all those screws loose. And um, the only thing that's holding together up here is the V-band, which is right there. I'm just gonna wait. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom first. There's four screws at the bottom that we're gonna have to pull out. And um, I'll go ahead and show you that guys that right now. All right, so looking from underneath the car, uh, we're looking directly at the exhaust flange. And there's one bolt there. And then we come to the other side. There's the second bolt there on the other side. Um, some people will say that you need to actually take off this belly pan from the car, but as you can see, there's plenty of space to stick your hand in there. Um, honestly, I don't see how taking the belly pan off would help you unless you just really wanted to use power tools to take it off, which is uh, pretty unnecessary. So we're going to go ahead and take those loose and um, head back up to the top side. All right, the last thing we're going to do before removing these down pipes is um, we're going to pull these V-bands off. Uh, just make sure when you're doing it, be very careful. Um, there's a washer underneath the screw when you pull that screw out. Um, I dropped the washer down on the motor, so I have to fish that out. But these screws actually uh, come out pretty easily. All right, so I just popped the V-bands loose and um, I slid those up towards the turbo housing. These uh, down pipes are already kind of loose in here. So um, I guess next up is uh, just trying to fish these things out of here. I've heard it can be difficult, but there's nothing holding them in. So I'm just gonna have to manipulate these things until they come out. Okay, so there's a bracket on each side of these things and it's blocking me from being able to easily pull these things out. So basically the bracket that these two screws are attached to, that is a bracket in itself. And it looks like there's two, um, Allen key bolts that hold that directly to the block or to the head or whatever that's attached to. Um, I can't see them, but I'm assuming that it's the same size that I used before. So we're going to go ahead and put our Allen on there and try to get those out of there. All right, now that I've got that bracket removed, this down pipe will slide out of here like butter. All right, so there's the old pipes and those are the new pipes. And uh, all we got to do now is fit those back inside the engine bay. And um, hopefully we don't have any difficulties with that. Before we do that, I just wanted to kind of take a look in here. And um, you know, from here you can see inside the turbos, which is kind of cool. You can see these, uh, these crossover pipes. So this is your actual exhaust manifold here. And kind of the cool thing about this is it's actually in 180 degree configuration, which basically technically makes this have a, a cross plane V8 sound, which is why a lot of people say that the new M cars don't sound like V8s is, is because they're not, um, they don't have that unequal length header thing going on that you typically see in V8 cars. So there's another ran random tidbit of information for you. And um, the other thing is, um, it looks like these guys just slide in there. Um, I'm not even sure what those bolts do down at the bottom or how the clamping works or anything like that or how they're in there tightly. But um, I'm just hoping I don't have any issues with that. But the new ones just slide in there, the old ones slide out. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the new ones in there. All right, we got one down pipe in so far and uh, that actually lined up pretty easily. Even though you can't see anything, it's not too hard to fish it into the hole where it belongs. Um, I do suspect that I'm going to have some issues trying to reattach that bracket down there. Um, I did have to bend that out on the new pipe just a little bit because it wasn't, um, it was basically interfering with my ability to line that up. So I just had to bend it out a little bit, which is typical of these type of parts. Um, so I may have to do it again for the other side, but I'm going to test fit it first just to see if it goes in, then I'll go ahead and put it in there. But everything on that side is strapped up as far as the down pipe goes up top and um, we're gonna finish doing the other side and then we're gonna tighten everything from below. One other quick thing I wanted to note is that the new down pipes don't have this bracket here up at the top. Um, I'm guessing it's not gonna need it because these things are way heavier than these and it probably just helps to take the weight off of um, off of the pipes themselves um, or off of the flanges. So. There's no bracket up here 
and uh, we shouldn't need it. All right, folks, so it looks like the BMW is not gonna escape the hands of the grinder. Um, I went to put the heat shield back on and things aren't lining up exactly, uh, just because if you look at the uh, diameter on those things, they're so much bigger and the O2 sensor actually sits closer to the heat shield. So when I try to put the heat shield back in the way it's supposed to be, uh, these basically block me from getting as close to the pipes as what I need to be. And um, the holes are pretty close, but I just there, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to them with these in here. So I could just completely delete these and run it that way, but I figure if uh, these are in here, I might as well try to reuse them. So I'm just going to shave the bottoms off, open that hole up, and continue to uh, use these as a heat shield. All right, so that's how that looks now, and I shouldn't have any issues getting my O2 sensors in there. All right, folks, so that's about it for this install. Um, to be honest, I'm actually surprised. This uh, went way more smoothly than what I expected it to be. Um, basically looking at videos and how this is done, I didn't really expect it to be too complicated, but um, just working on cars over the years and things. There's always things that jump out at you and cause a lot of frustration. I honestly expected this to take me the next three days to get done uh, just because of uh, unexpected issues, but here we are, um, we got it done. Uh, as you can see in the video, it looked pretty simple and straightforward, but this is a very time consuming job. Um, this probably took me five to six hours to do. Um, and that's just because um, all of the screws and stuff that you have to take out, um, they're like just out of reach to where it would be easy to pull these things out and you have to kind of get creative with your um, wrench and extension combinations and you know it's very easy to drop things down into the engine bay um, sadly two screws were lost at sea their bodies were never recovered um, but two is not a whole a, a terrible casualty rate uh, for this job um, one screw got left out because I just I just gave up on trying to put it back in it wasn't anything that was critical um, so yeah, uh, this uh, turned out to be a lot more simple than what I expected. I'm really crossing my fingers that I don't have any exhaust leaks because if I do, I'm not going to know what to do with them. Um, the only question now is, uh, what does it sound like? 